Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today is our lecture 26 and uh, we will be continuing our continuous random variables. In the last lecture we have seen the families of uh, continuous random variable. Today we will see another family of continuous random variable which is uh, uh, mostly uh, used in probability analysis that is known as the Gaussian. random variables so Gaussian band uh, were random variables we have uh, <coughs> we might have seen uh, bell-shaped curves bell-shaped uh, curves that appear in many applications that appear in that appear in many applications of probability theory. <coughs> so all the random variables that, that, uh, uh, that exhibit the bell-shaped curves are actually uh, uh, referred to as the Gaussian random variables. So the PDF of the Gaussian random variables uh, uh, is defined as, uh, so the PDF is defined as uh, uh, X is Gaussian and it has two parameters, uh, mu, sigma and we know that mu is the uh, mean or the expected value and sigma is the standard deviation of the uh, random variable. So uh, it is defined as x is mu sigma random variable. Random variable if the PDF of x is defined as f x of x, which is equal to one over two pi sigma square e raised power minus x minus mu square over oh sorry square is outside this bracket over 2 sigma square so where the parameters can be uh, mu can be any real number any real number and the parameter sigma should be greater than 0 that must not be a zero value so it means that uh, we know that mean is uh, mu is the expected value which gives me us the central number and sigma is the standard deviation gives which gives us the spread of the which gives us the spread of the data so uh, as this function uh, as this function implies that uh, we can see that this this portion this portion is the uh, uh, this portion gives us the uh, magnitude of this uh, 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 this PDF. So it means that that bell-shaped curves, that uh, bell-shaped curves, will be uh, means whatever is the height. So that height will be one over sigma. If we just take it out of the square root, so it will be one over sigma two pi. So uh, as we can see that uh, as the uh, as the uh, as the sigma uh, as the sigma will be higher as the sigma will be uh, higher, so the it will having the uh, it will uh, have the uh, low peak, and if the sigma is uh, high value, so small value, sorry. So its peak will be lower because it is in the denominator of this amplitude. And this spread, how much data is spread? Uh, this is a mu. And this spread is actually your sigma. 
so the big of say the bigger the sigma showing the bigger spread and obviously the peak will be lower and the small sigma will show the small spread where the peak is high so similarly we can uh, we can know that exactly from here expected value of x is mu and variance of x is simply sigma square so sometimes uh, this gaussian is uh, also gaussian random variable is also uh, referred to as uh, normal random variable so sometimes uh, sometimes gaussian mu sigma random variables are referred to as referred to as normal random variable okay so uh, to actually uh, if we want to integrate this uh, uh, this pdf because we know that if we integrate the pdf from minus infinity to infinity it is it will give me the one but the integral for this uh, gaussian random variable is uh, quite cumbersome and instead uh, we calculate uh, this uh, integral uh, to find out the probability in a specific interval uh, so we use the table that I will show you uh, sometimes later in this lecture so uh, that we use the table which are also given in the book if you want to look they are on the page number uh, 143 and 144 so we will use those tables to find out the, uh, the integral values of this uh, Gaussian random variable so they are quite easy to use so before using before uh, reaching to use those uh, uh, tables we have to look for certain properties of the Gaussian random variable so it is uh, defined as the theorem 4.13 and it says that uh, if X is Gaussian mu sigma and y is equal to a x plus b then y is y is Gaussian a mu plus b a sigma so the linear transformation of a Gaussian random variable produces another Gaussian random variable so uh, again so utilize this we have to uh, look for the uh, we have to transform this uh, Gaussian random variable into another uh, normal random variable uh, so we which to whom we call is uh, as the uh, to which we call it as standard normal random variable so yahan pe humne dekha hai ki agar hamare paas x ek gaussian random variable hai aur y hamare paas ax plus b hai to agar hum isko convert karte hain y mein to hamare paas ek aur gaussian random variable aata hai अब इसी प्रॉपर्टी को यूज करेंगे कि हम अगर इसको ट्रांसफॉर्म लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन से हमारे पास गॉजियन ही आता है तो उसके लिए हम एक स्टैंडर्ड नॉर्मल रैंडम वेरिएबल डिफाइन करते हैं और स्टैंडर्ड नॉर्मल रैंडम वेरिएबल से क्या मुराद है सो द स्टैंडर्ड नॉर्मल random variable we call it as z is Gaussian with 0 1 parameters so this is a random variable so, uh, so it means that uh, it simply means that here the expected value of z is 0 and 
variance of z is 1. So what we have done is uh, we uh, have created our another random variable z which is also a Gaussian and we will see how we have created it. So that would give us the zero mean and the uh, spread would be uh, spread would be one. So it simply means that if we have this uh, Gaussian curve, so instead of mean, this was the mu, instead of mean to be any number, so that was zero. So here it was a sigma plus and here it is sigma minus. So sigma, sorry, sigma minus. So this shows us the the spread of the data uh, according to the according to the sigma according to the standard deviation of the of the uh, random variable which is now normalized which has been normalized to zero and one so mean has become uh, zero i uh, mean uh, and the sigma will be transformed to one so that will give us the transformation so that uh, uh, that that uh, transformation will give us uh, uh, the benefit of using uh, those tables uh, uh, that are uh, in the uh, that I've shown you that uh, that are in the page number 143 of the book. So uh, it means that the CDF of this uh, normal uh, random variable will be the CDF of this normal random variable will, will be the CDF of the standard normal random variable z is phi of z 1 over 2 pi square root because sigma is 1 and minus infinity to small z e raised power minus uh, u square which is dummy variable of integration du so <coughs> how we will obtain this uh, uh, z actually that is uh, uh, the important thing uh, so it means that uh, we have to look for those uh, that transformation so uh, it is defined as a theorem 4.14 so यहाँ पे हमने देखा कि जो हमारे पास CDF है, जो standard normal random variable set जिसको हमने लिखा है, वो हमारे पास ही आ जाती है। इसमें अगर हम देखें तो sigma हमारे पास one है और mu हमारे पास zero है। अब इसको कैसे हम table में table से हम कैसे utilize करेंगे? अगर हमारे पास x random variable given है, उसको हम पहले z में transform करेंगे और z में transform करके हम फिर उसको table में देखेंगे और probability values हम निकालेंगे। तो उसको पहले हम देखते हैं कि इसको z में कैसे ट्रांसफॉर्म करेंगे। So for that we have this if x is Gaussian, if x is Gaussian mu sigma random variable, so the CDF of x is f x of x which is equal to phi x minus mu over sigma so now this this theorem will state us how we are going to uh, transform the x uh, random variable x uh, uh, with some uh, mu and sigma to transform into the uh, z uh, the, to the z which is the standard normal random variable so uh, for that if uh, the probability uh, so the probability 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 that x is in the interval so remember that we are working on the continuous random variable so always uh, we have to look for the intervals and we cannot work on the uh, point of, uh, probability because uh, we have seen that uh, probability for a continuous random variable is zero at a point so it means that a is greater than x is less than or equal to b. I hope you know this notation. So this means that uh, a is not included and this square bracket means that b is also included. So here it is represented here. So it would be phi b minus mu over 
sigma minus phi a minus mu over sigma. So, here we call this uh, z as uh, z is equal to x minus uh, generalized form in generalized form x minus mu over sigma. So, that will uh, give me the uh, z values uh, in the range and that z can be used to uh, it can be used for in the uh, can be used to find out the probabilities from the table. So, uh, it uh, let's have very small simple example. Example says that uh, uh, it is 4.15. So, it says that if x is equal to 46 and the sample value of uh, Gaussian Gaussian is 61 comma 10 uh, random variable express uh, test score as sample value and the standard normal random variable. So we know that z is simply x uh, minus mu over sigma here x is given 46 and uh, sigma hey, this is mu this is sigma uh, x minus mu mu is 61 and sigma is 10 so that comes out to be uh, minus 15 by 10 which is minus 1.5 so uh, what does it mean actually it simply means that uh, uh, because it is a negative number so it simply means that the score is it simply means that score is uh, 1.5 standard deviation 1.5 standard deviation less than the less than the expected value or the mean value expected value so this this transformation will give us the uh, the numbers in the form of uh, how much standard deviation the data is away from the away from the expected value if it, if it is positive it is higher if it is negative it is lower than the uh, expected value so, uh, for the negative values of z, so for the negative values of z, we use the theorem for the negative values of, for negative values of z, we use next theorem, which is uh, theorem 4.15. So, theorem 4.15 says that, uh, phi of minus z it is 1 minus phi of z because ne the table is not available for the negative numbers of the uh, negative values of the z so this can be uh, seen in the figure so I will uh, copy this figure from the uh, book so that it can be clearly visible it is figure 4.6 and uh, we can see that uh, uh, what we have defined as phi of minus z is equal to 1 minus phi of z so this this uh, this portion shows that for positive values of z so positive value of z this is the cdf so it means that from minus infinity to this z value we will have this uh, value that is under the curve so that will give me the integral from minus infinity to z and we will get the values from here but what about the negative values of z so negative values of z are the values of uh, uh, the integral uh, under the these are called actually the tails so under the tails so from minus infinity to minus z and uh, this can be represented as 1 minus phi of z so they both are same then these both regions are same that I have marked them as cross here. So, remember that the area under this whole curve from minus infinity to plus infinity a is 1. That is what we have defined as fx of x. If integrated minus infinity to plus infinity dx that is 1. 
so that's why we can use this 1 minus phi of z that will give me the same thing now let's uh, look at the small example uh, that we have done so it says that uh, it is actually example 4.16 it says that if x is uh, gaussian 61 10 random variable so if we want to find the probability of x is less than or equal to 46 so what would be the probability so we have seen that uh, we have calculated uh, uh, this uh, numbers so uh, phi x is less than or equal to 46 simply means fx of 46 which is uh, uh, phi of 1 minus 1.5 which is equal to 1 minus phi of 1.5 so to find out this uh, 1.5 we have to look into the table 4 point uh, table uh, it is 4.2 so if you open it from your book that would be quite easy for you to look at So I hope you have opened it uh, on page 143. If you look at table 4.2, it starts from the values of, uh, it has uh, uh, six columns and each column it says the Z and phi of Z. So it gives the number Z numbers and their uh, corresponding CDF uh, value. So if we have uh, here, we have 1.5. So if we look at the 1.50 in the fourth column, so the phi of z is 0 0.9332. So we can say that uh, it is 1 minus 0 0.933. So we will uh, we'll take only three significant figures. So that would be uh, quite simple. Then it is uh, 0 0.06. 7. So what does it means that uh, uh, it simply means that uh, if you if uh, the score is 1.5 standard deviation 1.5 standard deviation below the expected value so it is in the lowest 6.7 percent population of the test takers so it is uh, it is in the uh, it is in the lowest uh, it is in the lowest so the marks are in lowest 6.7 percent of the population of test takers so let's uh, look at another example it says that uh, example 4.17 <coughs> it says that uh, Gaussian X is Gaussian uh, 61 10 random variable so what is the probability of X between 71 and 51 so we have to uh, convert this uh, into uh, Z so for that uh, first we will say uh, transform this limit these limits into z so that will say z1 which is uh, uh, x uh, minus mu uh, x minus mu over sigma so x is 51 minus 61 divided by 10 which is uh, minus 1 and similarly z2 so we call it say z2 so that is 71 minus 61 by 10 which is plus one so it means that uh, uh, we have to find out the probability probability from minus one greater than z less than or equal to one so which is uh, st straightforward phi of one minus phi of minus one so we will use the theorem phi of one minus one minus phi of one so that would be simply <coughs> uh, 
2 phi of 1 minus 1. So if we look into the table, uh, again table remember 4.2 for uh, right now we are using. So phi of 1 is uh, 0 0.841. 2 into 0 0.841 so minus 1 so that comes out to be 0 0.683 so so remember that this is a very important example uh, because it tells us that uh, our data is has a spread of uh, uh, one standard deviation from the uh, so one standard deviation from the uh, from the uh, expected value here as we can see that uh, 51 is uh, 10, 110 uh, below the mean value and uh, 71 is uh, 10, 10 numbers above the mean value. So it is the once, uh, uh, one standard deviation above and below the expected value. So what we can see here is that 68.3% uh, of the test takers uh, of the test takers have their marks uh, between uh, have their marks between have marks between plus minus uh, one sigma so that simply means that uh, with within the one standard deviation uh, the 68.3 percent of the test takers are lying similarly approximately uh, approximately uh, 95 percent 95 percent which uh, comes out to be uh, two uh, standard deviation uh, 95 percent test takers lie in the uh, two times the uh, in the between the plus minus two uh, uh, standard deviation so that can be obtained from here similarly so it simply means that uh, uh, it simply means that uh, if we will have the more and more uh, standard deviations, uh, if we look at the more standard deviation, so we will see all of the data will be lying, maybe uh, most of 95% if it is in the st uh, second uh, standard deviation. So in the third, st third uh, standard deviation, it may be it's approximately 99% of the data will be lying. So most of the data that lie uh, uh, in the uh, for the z which is greater than or equal to 3 uh, for the z which is greater than or equal to 3 lies in the that is called the tails uh, tails of the tails of the pdf so as we can see from the tails uh, uh, get some picture here so the tails of the pdf if we see that here the values of uh, these numbers, the numbers are very small. So these numbers are very small. So if we see that approximately somewhere here would be minus 3 and somewhere here it would be 3. So we can see that that's a very minute a small number, although it would not be a 0, uh, maybe up till infinity, but it would be uh, approximately 0. But if we directly calculate it, uh, but if we directly uh, calculated phi of 3, and phi of uh, suppose if we calculate uh, uh, phi of 3 uh, instead so it would be maybe approximately in 0 0.9987 and similarly phi of 4 would be approximately 0 0.9999768 so that can that is not actually uh, possible so above the third standard deviation so we use the table which is uh, uh, table 4.0 uh, 4.3 that is used for the standard normal complementary CDF Q of Z. So above the third, if you can see this table, uh, that starts from the three, and the Q of Z, if we can see, it, these are very small values, and it gives us up to 4.99. So uh, beyond that, it is uh, it is not necessary to calculate any probability because uh, that is. Uh, if you see at the 4.99, it is 3.02 into 10 to the power minus 7. That's a very, very, very small number. That's very, very, very small number. So that uh, may not be of any uh, significance. Uh, uh, if we require, we can use any computer simulation software like MATLAB or any other software to calculate these probabilities, which are even very small. 
So, uh, uh, what is the standard normal uh, complementary CDF? It is uh, defined as the complementary, the uh, standard normal, the standard normal complementary CDF is defined as Q of Z, which is probability of Z is greater than Z is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root uh, Z to infinity e raised power minus mu, uh, sorry, u square by 2 du, which is equal to 1 minus pi of Z. So, uh, let's uh, look at the example how we can use it. So, it is uh, example 4.18. So, example 4.18, it says that uh, in an optical fiber transmission system, the probability of bit error is probability bit error is Q gamma over 2, where gamma is uh, signal to noise ratio. Gamma is signal, signal to noise ratio. So, what is the minimum value of gamma? So, what is the minimum value of gamma? So, we need to find the minimum value of gamma to produce a bit error to produce a bit error to produce a bit error not exceeding 10 to the power minus 6. So, <coughs> if you just uh, look at the table 4.3, table 4 so we have to see that uh, Q of Z is less than 10 to the power minus 6. So, that happens when uh, less than 10 to the power minus 6. So, if you look at the table, it will start from minus uh, uh, 4 point when z is when z is greater than or equal to 4.75. So, if we just look at the table 4.3, uh, so at the values of 4.75, so that gives us the last uh, uh, values of the 1.02 into 10 to the power minus 6 and if at 4.76 it is 9.68 into 10 to the power minus 7. So, that will be less. Therefore, if uh, therefore if gamma is uh, uh, if uh, uh, gamma over 2 square root it is greater than or equal to 4.75 or in other words uh, or in other words uh, gamma is greater than or equal to 45 uh, so the probability error is uh, so the probability then probability probability error is less than is less than 10 is for minus 6 so let's uh, look at this example once again. So yes, example में हमारे पास क्या कहता है कि probability के हमारे पास जो bit error है, uh, bit error है, वो q जो हमारे पास given है, which is gamma by two square root, और जो gamma हमारे पास है वो signal to noise ratio है. 
اب کہتا ہے کہ ہمارے پاس منیمم ویلیو گیما کیا ہم رکھیں جو جو کہ ہمارے پاس سگنل ٹو نائس ریشو کی ویلیو ہے کہ ہمارے پاس جو بٹ ایرر ریٹ ہے وہ ٹین ریس پر مائنس سکس سے نہ بڑھے مینز اس سے کم کم رہے سو اس کے لیے ہم نے یہ سمپل ہے ٹیبل جو فور پوائنٹ تھری ہم نے یہ بھی دیکھا ہے سٹینڈرڈ نارمل کمپلیمنٹری جو سی ڈی ایف کے لیے ہمارے پاس ٹیبل ہے تو اس کو ہم نے یوٹلائز کرنا ہے تو اس کو ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ کیو آف زیڈ کی جو ویلیو ہے ٹین ریس پر مائنس سکس سے کہاں پر یہ کم ہوتی ہے تو اگر ہم اس کو دیکھیں تو فور پوائنٹ سیون فائیو کے بعد یہ جو ویلیوز ہے اس کی ٹین ریس پر مائنس سکس سے کم ہو جاتی ہے تو اس کا مطلب ہے کہ ہم اگر اس کو اسی ہی جو لیمٹ ہے اس پر رکھیں تو ہمارے پر جو گیمہ بائی ٹو اس کے روٹے that is greater than 4.75 تو اس میں سے اگر ہم گیمہ کی ویلیو کو نکال لیں تو ہمارے پاس کیا جاتا ہے 45 سو اس کا مطلب ہے کہ اگر ہم نے گیمہ کو 45 یا اس سے زیادہ رکھیں مطلب سگنل ٹو نائس ریشو ہمارے پاس 45 یا اس سے زیادہ کی ہوگی تو ہمارے پاس جو پروبیلٹی ایرر ہے وہ ٹرانسپورم مائنس سکس سے کم آئے گا So uh, let's look, I th uh, think it's easy. So let's look at another example. Okay, so let's uh, copy it from the book. So it is quiz 4.6. It says that X is Gaussian uh, standard normal random variable 0, 1. And Y is the Gaussian 0, 2 random variable. Sketch the PDFs uh, fx of x and fy of y on the same axis. And uh, so first we need to uh, plot them. So plotting is uh, easy. So we can see that uh, x is uh, x uh, mean is 0 and uh, standard deviation is 1. So its peak will be 1 over 2 pi square root. And here it is, uh, it would be 1 over 2. That would be means uh, half of the peak of that value. So that would be, so for the x, if you use this red color, so it will be approximately 0 0.4. And uh, so approximately half of the value of uh, that will be for the, this was uh, uh, for the y here so it would be uh, because it has more spread so like this so this is uh, uh, fy of y and this red color one is fx of x so this is uh, t uh, this has two sigmas uh, which one over sigma is two here sigma is one now the next point uh, it say uh, is asking us to find out the probabilities the part one says that uh, because x is already uh, in the standard normal form so we don't have to transform it so that would be simply so part one says that probability minus one less than x less than equal to one so that would be phi of uh, 1 minus phi of minus 1. So we can use that theorem 1 minus phi of 1. So that is 1 by, uh, sorry, 2 times phi of 1 minus 1. So we have calculated this number. This number is 0 0.6826. We don't have to calculate it again. Similarly, for uh, B, uh, probability of minus 1 less than y less than equal to 1. So, so since uh, y is uh, uh, not uh, already in the standard normal uh, form, so we have to convert it. So say th this is say z1 and say z2, whatever it be means, uh, that is simple. So this is minus 1, mu is uh, 0 divided by 2. So it is minus 1 by 2. And similarly, z2 is uh, 1 minus 0 by 2, which is 1 by 2. 
so it means that uh, that would be simply uh, phi of minus uh, uh, sorry phi of uh, 1 by 2 minus phi of minus 1 by 2 so again uh, it is uh, phi of 0 0.5 minus 1 minus phi of 0 0.5 so there's 2 phi of 0 0.5 minus 1 so again from the table if we find out this uh, phi of 0.5 and multiply by 2 so that will come out to be 0 0.383 so the next uh, uh, part says that uh, uh, find the probability um, of x is greater than 3.5 now uh, we can see that uh, this is uh, because x is already in the standard normal form so 3.5 means it's greater than uh, the three standard deviation so what we can do is directly we can use the table 3.4.3 and uh, calculate the value from uh, the table 5 3.4 sorry 3.5 which comes out to be 2.33 into 10 is power minus 4 so the next part says that uh, uh, what is the probability uh, for y is greater than uh, 3.5 now since we know that uh, y is uh, is a two standard deviation y is uh, not normally uh, so uh, that would be <coughs> so it means if we simply uh, use this uh, Sorry, uh, sorry, one make one correction. This is not uh, phi, this is q. If we use the same 3.5 by 2, because we have this two deviations, two standard deviation, so that would be uh, q of 1.75. So that would be as 1 minus phi of uh, 1.75. So we can use now table 4.2. And we will calculate uh, find out that this is 0 0.04 so uh, this was uh, the Gaussian random variable so I hope you have understood uh, so we will continue uh, this continuous random variable in our next lecture stay blessed assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh